following Jesus. Jesus was passing by. The miracle was coming, and it was going. Somebody was going to get it, or it was going to go on by. This is a big moment. And this blind man sitting there expecting a miracle, he believed it would come to him someday, recognized it when it approached, and he reached out to get it. And Jesus said, what do you want the miracle for? And he said that I might receive my sight. Oral, the preacher said, who prayed for me, what do you want? I said, my lungs restored and my stuttering tongue healed. Maybe it didn't do any God for me, do God any good for me to say it, but it did Oral a lot of good to say it. I said it publicly. Somebody here has something in your heart, in your life, that you are intimidated by, or you're ashamed of, or you've had a long time, and you'd rather not be specific about it in public. You might want to whisper it, nothing wrong with that, but Jesus here put the man on the spot. He puts you on the spot, me on the spot, I woke up Wednesday night after midnight and God directed me to this scripture. I didn't get my Bible because I know it by memory and I lay in the bed quoting this scripture until I got to the part where he said, what wilt thou have me do unto thee? And I preached the rest of the night until daybreak and the Lord said, that's the one that you preach at World Harvest Church next Sunday. Now, what is it that you want God to do for you? Are you willing to say it publicly, even if it embarrasses you? Suppose that you're full of lust, and you've tried to get free from it, but somehow you haven't been able to. When you look at a woman or a man, it's for lust. Would you be willing to be specific? God, I'm a woman or a man full of lust. What would you have me do for you? I want you to deliver me from lust. Lord, I've stolen some things in my life. I'm really a thief. Would you be willing to say publicly, Lord, I'm a thief. I've stolen time at my job. I've stolen things off the job. I've stolen things from other people. I'm a thief. Now that's not what you ordinarily call yourself. But from God's eyes, what do you want God to do for you? Is it say, Lord, deliver me from being a thief that I don't want to steal anymore. The Bible says steal no more. It may be adultery that you're mixed up in an affair right now and things are bad and they're going to get worse. Are you willing to stand up publicly like this blind man did who stood up publicly and opened his mouth and said, Lord, that I might receive my sight? Have you lost all your faith that you'll prosper? Do you really believe that you'll never make it financially? Are you willing to stand up in this audience and say, I believe I'm poor and I'm going to be poor the rest of my life, and I want God to deliver me from a poverty mentality? Are you willing to say that to Jesus? He says, what wilt thou that I shall do unto thee? Wednesday night, he did everything to me but turned me loose. I was lying there in the bed, figuring out what's the worst thing about me that I want deliverance from. And I'd say this, and I'd say that, and say this, and say that. Finally, I had to center in on what I believe was the number one thing I wanted God to deliver me from. Preachers are just like you. They walk in shoes, and they wear clothes, and they eat, and they have flesh, and, and they face the same devil. And sometimes we get into problems. 
we have needs. And I found out what the biggest need of my life was, and I've been praying all week. And I'm here today publicly. I don't know what I'll say publicly before this meeting is over. But I want Jesus Christ to bring full deliverance into my life. Full deliverance into my life. Full deliverance into my life. This may not sound like it cuts, but it, it's cutting right now. I feel the Holy Ghost knife is, is cutting right down through this audience. Starting up here in the pulpit, starting up here in the choir. Yay, yay. What wilt thou that I shall do unto thee, not somebody else? Well, Lord, I know this guy over here. He's full of lust. I've been praying for him. How about your lust? Well, this person over here is a gossip, Lord. I've been praying that they wouldn't gossip anymore. How about your gossip? This person over here, Lord, just doesn't have any faith at all. I pray for them and they get the victory for a day and they lose it. How about your faith? Does your faith last every day? How about your unbelief? How about my unbelief? Are we willing to stand up and say, Lord, this is what I want you to do for me? Wouldn't you appreciate yourself more than you've been doing? Wouldn't you want a better self-image? Wouldn't you want to have a better feeling toward God and for God to have a better feeling toward you? Wouldn't you want to get the silly thing out of you? Wouldn't you want to say the devil get your filthy hands off my life? Wouldn't you want to be clean from your hair to your toenails? Wouldn't you want to be sanctified inside and out? Wouldn't you want Jesus to do what he's able to do and nobody else is able to do for your life? What wilt thou that I would do unto thee? Lord, that I may receive my sight. Thy faith hath saved thee. And immediately his eyes opened. He received his sight and glorified God. And the people following who had just rebuked him now broke out into praise to glorifying God. A, a miracle settles the issue. I want to tell you a story, and then I'll close. But this is the best part of the sermon. I was in Formosa many years ago when General Chiang Kai-shek and his wife were ruling that land. I was received by them, and I was received by the army, and was in a big auditorium, and God was, was blessing except in one area. Lots of people got saved, but when I had the healing line, hardly anybody was getting healed. They were Chinese people. And uh, three or four nights passed, and I was baffled. Uh, I, I didn't receive any revelational knowledge. And one of the missionaries called me off and said, Brother Roberts, the Chinese people don't like to be touched and you touch with your hand. They think you're putting them down. Well, we Americans never thought of such a thing. You know, it's, we elevate you when we lay hands on you over here. But that was different. So the next night, I carefully explained how much I loved you when I lay my hand on you. I am laying my hand on you, and by that, I'm laying my heart upon you. I'm laying my faith upon you, and I'm here to get you delivered by the power of God. I esteem you very highly, and when I lay hands on you, that's my highest esteem. Well, I preached my sermon after that, had the altar call, then the healing line followed, and a little Chinese woman with a garter bigger than my fist came in the line. Meanwhile, Along the side of the entire auditorium were hundreds and hundreds of soldiers. And they were watching, and there was a very tense atmosphere. And here came this Chinese woman with this huge gorter, 
And when I touched her in Jesus' name, I was saying to the interpreter, Ma'am, when I touch you, I'm not putting you down. I'm esteeming you highly. I'm speaking in Jesus' name for that gorder to leave your throat. And it vanished in open, open sight. It vanished. And all of a sudden, I heard hundreds of feet, and they were rushing the platform. It was these soldiers. Hundreds of them rushed the platform, and they grabbed this woman. They grabbed her neck, and they began to talk in Chinese and to ask her where it went. Where did it go? Where did it go? And she was trying to say God healed it. And finally, they understood that God healed this woman's quarter, and they saw it leave. And they all turned and knelt and wanted me to come and lay hands on every one of them. Now, why am I telling you the story? It has a point to it. A miracle settles the issue. I received an invitation after that day to speak to the generals, the colonels, and the leaders of the whole army. I was awakened from my sleep by a messenger from General Chiang Kai-shek to come to the palace and to be received by him. The whole island turned around by one woman's miracle, by a gorder being healed. It settled an issue. My friend, if you open up and let God know what your need is and let him heal it, it'll settle an issue. The third brother from my left on the front row, would you come up? You. And the woman next, would you come up? The woman, the woman, the, the beautiful woman, that one. Come up. And on the end over here, brother, you. Yeah, you come up. And you that's been out in the sun, both of you, come up. You know I'm coming to ask you to come up. You right there. Come on. Yes. Oh, I see you. Yes. You. Come up, will you? And you, brother. Yes, yes, you. And you, brother. Come up. Come up. It's going to be a hot time in the old town tonight. Ah, would you come up? I see you over there. Young lady, would you come up? No one can give peace. Cannot understand. Would you all turn around and face me? Pastor, would you stand with me, please, with your microphone? Okay, folks, this is the moment. What wilt thou that Jesus will do for you? Are you willing to let it all hang out? It was a public meeting. The great crowd was there when Jesus asked the question. Are you willing to let it all out? Are you willing to say, Lord, this is what I want you to heal me from, deliver me from? Do you want the miracle? Are you willing to embarrass yourself if that's necessary? Or, of course, you, you may be a saint to begin with, and, and there's really nothing there. You may have nothing at all that God needs to do in your life. I, I really don't. How about starting with you? Are you willing? What is it? I want God to heal me from the spirit of lying. Say it again. I want God to heal me from the spirit of lying. Hear it off. Lying. Lie. You walk right out here. Stand right there. Pastor, you ask anyone that you want to ask. We'll get to you next. What is it that you would have the Lord do for you? To open my womb. To open her womb. You, you come and stand by this woman. Now, brother, 
this brother right here. Y'all are together? No. They're ushers. No. Oh, the husband? Oh, ushers. do stand by her then. What is it, brother? I'm an usher, sir. I'm what? just standing behind the slate. Oh, you're standing behind the slate. How about it, brother? I need healing in my back. In your back. Stand up there, please. How about it? All right. I would like God to deepen my prayer life. Okay. I have a shaky palsy. I want God to heal me off. All right. Stand right up there with them. I'd like God to heal me from the spirit of fear. Say it loud. Spirit of fear. That'll get a lot of folks in the audience. Are you at for the Lord to, to give me boldness. Boldness. That means you don't have boldness? Right. This, yes. How tall are you? 6'1". Six 6'1". One. Six one. What do you weigh? 230. 230. And you're not bold. Uh, just fear, too. Just, you know. Ah, go ahead and talk. Just fear and, and boldness and, and give me strength. Sure. Just to stand strong. Go ahead and talk. Just to stand strong for the Lord. And? And to, and to be everything he wants me to be and to be be a, a witness to him. Stand right over there. Uh, I've been finding in my eight years of being a Christian that uh, the Lord says to love your to love your neighbor as yourself. And I've been finding that I don't have love for myself, and I can't sincerely love anybody until I do that. And that's just what I want God to really put in me. She needs, she needs God to help her love herself. Now, that's about 90% of the people in this congregation this morning. She said, God commands me to love other people, but I can't love them because I don't love myself. I need God to help me love myself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself you don't have any problem loving your neighbor do you you do so you've got a double problem loving them and loving you you know you don't have an honesty problem though thank god brother what's coming up out of your heart i'm filled with lust stand right over here listen people When you get right down to the truth of God, biologically men are lustful creatures. You ask their wives. We have to fight it. And some lose the battle. Many overcome the thing, but some lose the battle. Specifically, God told me to ask people to be specific about what you want him to do. Now, brother, I admire you, and there's a lot of other people that admire you. There. There is somebody, somebody in the television audience, you have this spirit of lust, and you know it. And you've not wanted anyone to know. They know. People know. They have ways of finding out about us. We really can't hide anything in the ultimate sense. Not only from God, but somebody will know. You join us as we minister here. Pastor, are you ready for your next one? Right here. I want to be delivered from a spirit of fear. Um, Speaking in front of people, I want boldness, and that's been a problem since I was a little kid. I want the Lord to heal my physical relationship with my wife. Heal your physical relationship with your wife. Hold it right there. Y'all really want to know my main problem? Oh, you don't? Okay, okay. Okay, I won't mention it. I, apparently, then you don't want to hear it. Ah, uh, you walked over in front then, huh? Look, I'm 77 years young, and I'm still an active man. Do you get the point?
this audience say, ah, but you're getting old. Not in that department. <laughs> well, how long would you like to be active? Oh, about 90. You think I'm kidding? Look, my sex life is involved with my spiritual life and involved with my vision, with my calling. If something stops in my body the way God created me, then something bad happens to my vision, to my ability to pray. I want a full-orbed life until God takes me out of the world. Hold it, I'm not through with my confession. I want him to do something for me. Young men have, have told me they were not active as, as I am. Young women have said that to my wife. And many older people have given up. You need to be healed of oldness. Yeah. Yeah. Now, you women, lend me your ear. I want you to understand how your husband is built, that he didn't create himself. God told him to replenish the earth. There can't be any replenishing without the man. And he's got to have a woman right next to him. Do you get the point? Life's got to go on. We can't dry up in our bodies. Now, I wrestled over this Wednesday night. Now, I've never said this in my life, but I'm telling you, I want God to give me such a healing in my body, he extends my ability until he calls me home. Jesus I wonder. Pastor, come over here, please. Have I offended you or this church? I'm having a wonderful time, Dr. Robert. <laughs> Have I offended any of y'all? Have I offended any of y'all? Have I offended any of y'all? Ma'am, have I offended you? Yes, sir. Are you for me? Yes, I am. Oh, she's for me. Yay. 26 years old, and she, she's for me. Now, darling, come up and stand by me. Now we'll get the verdict. <laughs> what do you got to say, darling, about the man you married 56 years ago? I'm, I'm with you all the way. <laughs> Yes, Lord! Do you think we're getting a healing? We're getting a healing of our emotions. We're getting a healing of our understanding. We're getting a healing of understanding God. You realize Moses was 120 and had lost nothing in his body. Right. His natural strength was unabated the day he died. How about us being a Moses again? Anybody in favor of that? Raise your right hand. Thank you, darling. Have we missed anybody, Pastor? We've got those two. Is there anybody else? That's it. Y'all stand right here now. Are you ready? Are you ready? Pastor, will, will you go with me? We're going to lay hands on you. Now, everybody, are you willing to be honest with God and tell him what your big need is? May I see your hand? Take your other hand and lay it on your body where it's nearest the big need. Now, you watch us the moment our hand goes on these people you feel our hand on yours as an instrument of God's hand on your soul, mind, and body. Will you say amen? And you at home, you do the same thing. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, be loose! 
Glory to God. Open up her womb, oh Lord, in Jesus' name. No one can bind Tell me yours again. Back. Back. Oh, be loose. No one can bind your prayer life. You want your prayer life opened up. Loose him, O Lord, in Jesus' name. Say yours again, Al. Palsy, leave him, leave him. Fear, fear, come out of him. You cannot understand. Bonus, come to him. Love yourself. Love yourself, but love God first. Lust, lose him. We've got to get it all out. Come out! No one can invite your words with nails on the no Timidity, come out! Timidity, come out! This woman's husband is at home with what they call Lou Gehrig's disease. And she's here because she had a dream that I would pray for her husband. So I'm laying my hands on him by laying hands on her. In the name of Jesus, Lou Gehrig's disease, come out! Come out! Come out. touch you like Rod, you come with me, please. No one can. Healing time has come. Healing time has come. Everybody say, Lord. Lord. You ask me what you want me to do for you. I want to tell you. I want to tell you. Now speak out loud to yourself. Tell him. Be specific. Lift up your voice. He said, what wilt thou that I should do unto thee? He's not kidding. He's got the miracle for you, my friend. The atmosphere of expectation is, is the birthplace of miracles. I believe I heard a pastor say that once by the name of Rod Parsley. Now, who has told God what your real need is, specifically you want him to do? Raise your hand. Keep your hand up. Pastor, this is the hour of expectancy. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. I want you to stand on your feet. Stand on your feet. I want this gentleman right here to come here a minute. I'm just going to obey the Holy Ghost. Come here a minute. Come here a minute. Come here. God. Lift up your hands right now. Now you've got a quiet spirit on you right now, and that's not what Dr. Roberts preached about. So the first thing you need to do is open up your spirit. Open up your spirit with a great shout of hallelujah. Shout again, hallelujah. Shout again and keep on shouting. Now at that same volume, begin to tell him what you want him to do for you. Let the release of your faith come in the volume of your voice. Lift up your voice and tell him, 
specifically what you want him to do. Lift it up. Forget who's around you. Forget about the crowd around you. Forget about the people around you. Forget that your wife's standing beside you. Your Bartimaeus, you're sitting by the roadside. You're begging Jesus. Your miracle is just about to pass by. Don't let it pass. Don't let it pass. Cry out the louder. Cry out the louder. Now stop. Now be ready to receive. Lay your hands on your belly. Under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, standing in covenant blood, I speak to you the directive of the Holy Ghost of God. And I say unto thee, thy faith hath made thee whole. Now shout because you know. going to pray for people at home and when I turn to you and say audience I want you to say amen but, but only when I say audience for example audience yes. not quite that loud audience yes. a little a, a little louder next time as you have been watching us today on television learn from the Bartimaeus, the blind man, that he believed, in spite of the big crowd rebuking him, that he could call on Jesus, and Jesus would hear him, and Jesus would give him back his sight. He believed that. What do you believe? Do you believe, after hearing this message, that no matter who you are and where you are, that if you call, the Lord will hear? I'm going to pray for you now. Lay your hand on your TV set or, or lay your hand on your body or lay your hand on someone near you. God sent me today to pray for you and to help you get your deliverance. In the name of Jesus of Nazareth, son of the living God, I rebuke this disease. I rebuke this financial burden. I rebuke this bad relationship that you have with somebody. I rebuke the lust. I rebuke the fear. I rebu re rebuke the inner torment. I rebuke the negative things that are holding you back. In Christ's name, I believe for God to heal you. And all the audience said, yeah. friend, these this great audience is with me as I pray for you. In the name of Christ, be healed throughout your whole being. And the audience said, yeah. Now if it's an arm, hold it out. Or if it's a leg, put your hand on your leg. Or if it's your eyes or your ears or any part of your body that is bad, lay your hands on it. Jesus, they're being specific with you now. They're telling you what their need is. I'm standing with them, expecting a miracle. And I'm expecting that miracle for you to begin now. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. I believe it. I, I expect it. I it. Amen and amen. amen. Thank you and be seated. I would appreciate hearing from you if you, if you received your healing today if the healing began or it was completed, or even if it didn't start and you want prayer. My mailing address is Oral Roberts, Tulsa, Oklahoma, or in Canada, Toronto, Ontario. Just write and tell me, talk to me. You ask me, do I ever see your letter? I see every letter that I get. I lay my hands on every letter I get. I don't think of it as a letter, I think of it as a person, because a person wrote that letter. Somebody may even have to write it for you. That's all right. Tell me. I'll pray. I'll write you back. By God's grace, I'll help you find 
a better life. In Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Pastor? You enjoy Dr. Oral Roberts. Are you glad Sister Evelyn was with us today? Praise the Lord. I would like you to be seated. Ushers, ushers, this is no time for people to be exiting this building. I refuse to allow you to dishonor the gift of God in that manner. Don't one other person get up from your seat. It's no wonder we have so far less of the move of the Spirit of God than, than we desire. I don't, in here we have the glory of God. We have the ministry of holy angels. We have the communion of the Holy Spirit. I don't know what you're in such a hurry to get back out to hell for. Now, I'll just share this with you because I love you. Because I love you. In our church, this building is this full on Sunday morning. And if I preach till 2 o'clock, we sit here and amen because we're hungry for God. You say, well, in my church, as soon as it looks like they're going to dismiss, I head out so I can get to the parking lot first. But you're not at your church. And that's the reason that I refuse. We have 12,000 hotel rooms booked out for this week, plus our congregation of over 6,000 already here. And folks say, why don't you move it downtown? You could have 20, 25,000 because that, that atmosphere is not prepared like this one. I'm not moving it anywhere. So long as we're at World Harvest, we're going to do the way they do at World Harvest, and that is be mad when they dismiss instead of in a hurry to see it happen. Right now, we're going to honor the great ministry gift that God has given us. But beyond that, what soil has been prepared today for your resurrection seed? God is interested in your seed because he knows the seed has the multiplication in itself to meet your need. Dr. Oral Roberts brought to America and the world the revelation of seed faith giving. He teaches us and has taught us for so many decades that we must direct our seed toward our need. Hannah knew that. Jephthah knew that, Cornelius knew that, that we must direct our seed toward our need. And then we know that we must become soil selective. Jesus said the seed falls on four kinds of ground. Only one kind of ground produces a harvest. That's only 25%. That's the reason you need to be soil selective and choose the proper soil to release your seed faith into. Dr. Oral Roberts stands paramount above all the others who have taught us this revelation. Therefore, the seed of his life, the soil of his life and ministry are so receptive to receiving a miracle working seed from your life. The offering that you're about to give is to not only honor the ministry gift that God has graced this planet with, but also to be a point of contact for the release of your faith so that God may work a miracle. How many of you are expecting a miracle? Just say that I'm expecting a miracle. Then activate your faith right now with a seed faith gift into the Oral Roberts ministry. I know so many of you would love to come and just put an offering in his hand personally and tell him what he has meant to your life. You can do that now. If you'll take an envelope there in the pew in front of you, or if you'll take out your check and make your check payable to World Harvest Church, we will see to it that Dr. Roberts receives one gift. Every penny in this offering will go directly to Dr. Roberts. Not a penny will go anywhere else. So you give with the liberty of that knowledge. Last year, we were honored as a church to place in Dr. Roberts' hands one of the 44 Golden Eagle gifts to birth that television station in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And he has 40 of them. 
he's only looking for four more. I think he said he was looking for 40 more. Of course, we'll take 40 more. But we were honored last year to put into his hand a gift of $25,000 from this camp meeting to bless his work. I hope today we can go beyond that. And we can right now if you release the greatest seed faith gift of your life into his ministry, believing for your greatest miracle. Don't focus on your seed. Focus on the harvest. If you're making a check, make it payable to World Harvest Church. Heavenly Father, anoint this offering. Bless it. Multiply it to your servant and the work of his hands. Grant the miracle request on every envelope and on every check as we mix our praying with our giving and put a seed on our need, believing you for increase. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Are you ready to give us unto the Lord? Gentlemen, would you go ahead and wait on the people? Tonight at 7 o'clock. Now this afternoon, there'll be no afternoon meeting. But tonight at 7 o'clock, God willing, I'm going to preach. I'm not going to play. I'm going to preach. God has given me a message that says, in a day when a powerless Pentecost has become the norm and not the exception, with more perversion than power, more playboys than prophets, and more compromise than conviction, we need the blessed Holy Spirit who condescends to come and indwell mortals to fill us full of himself. I'm going to be looking tonight for a baptism of power, of fire, and for the wind of God to blow in this house and rekindle Pentecostal fire and fervor in your life. So don't miss it tonight at 7 o'clock. Gary Oliver will be back with us tonight. Reggie and Becky Spires will be back with us tonight. The World Harvest Church Choir will be with us. And Donnie McClurkin will grace this pulpit singing tonight. Don't miss that. We're going to have a time in the Lord at 7 o'clock. Would you honor Dr. Oral Roberts and Sister Evelyn Roberts as they exit the building at this time and let them know how much you appreciate their ministry to you tonight. Stretch your hands out to these 60,000 knees. Father, in the name of your Christ, we release the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That same anointing with which Barnabas reached out to you, so have these reached out to you. We release the anointing of the Holy Spirit into every one of these prayer calls. Meet every need. Drive out every devil. Re rescue and reclaim every backslider. Let homes be put back together. I rebuke the lesbian spirit, the homosexual devil. I rebuke cancer. I rebuke AIDS and arthritis. I rebuke sugar diabetes. I rebuke the spirit of divorce and command it in the name of God's Christ. Come out and be freed in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Would you thank God right now for the anointing that destroys every oath. Everybody shall thank God for the anointing. Thank God for the anointing. Let me share with you. I don't know if we have any of Dr. Robert's books left or not. Someone would have to help me know that. If we do, they'll be in the foyers for you. Gary Oliver's CDs and tapes you get the coupon two dollars off at the bookstore on either one reggie and becky spires just released a brand new cassette and cd stop by and get that and i got some pretty good stuff out there myself i think you ought to stop by and i've got a series out there i've got a series out there that every preacher needs and everybody that's got a preacher needs to get one for him it's called passion desire and sensuality it will flat set you on fire, I promise you. I promise you. What else do I have out there? Tell me what else I got out there. Hey! Talk to me. Tell me what I got out there. Ten golden keys 
How many of you'd like to receive a $2,277,000 miracle? Well, if you get those 10 golden keys out there, you can find out how to do it. Amen. What else I got out there? Huh? Huh? Roadblocks to revival. You can see, watch me smoke a cigarette. Yes, sir. it's right on the cover. And don't write me any goofy letters either. Not paying any attention to your letters. I preached in uh, Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina, yeah. a message that literally shook this nation on television. Come on. It's called Roadblocks to Revival, where I go inside Aiken's tent and pull out the things that I believe are stopping revival. It'll be a blessing to you. That's on video and audio. There's a whole bunch of good stuff out there. There's hot dogs and hamburgers and nachos and barbecued ribs. All that kind of stuff out there in the cafeteria. Make yourself available to that. Be careful in the parking lots. Spend the day before the Lord. And let's come in here tonight believing God's going to pour out his spirit like he did on the day of Pentecost. Somebody shout yay! I'll see you tonight at 7 o'clock. Stay in victory.